Jason Aaron and Luca Maresca take the awesome and action-packed Phoenix story into an interesting new territory as Earth's Mightiest Heroes continue to battle it out for the Phoenix Force. Jason Aaron continues writing an epic, action-packed Phoenix story, but this time adds some honestly surprising twists. I do enjoy that most of the book was sectioned off for the tournament-like battles for the Phoenix, but what I really enjoyed was the heroes trying to come up with a plan to stop the Phoenix, and that plan being that, well, if they have to have the Phoenix, then it should be the one who is most able to control it, and the one who will be able to fight off its control, and that person being Shang-Chi, which I thought was quite awesome and great use of that character. The biggest piece of story progression however comes right at the end when it's implied that Thor may or may not be the son of the Phoenix or at least the first woman who was imbued with the Phoenix Force. Which if any other writer had been handling I would have been worried with but with Jason Aaron who was just hot off his almost decade long Thor run dealing with it I'm super excited to see what extra lore he has in store for Thor and the Avengers 1 billion team. Luca Maresca steps onto the book after Javier Garon, easily matching Javier's kinetic and fast-paced action and awesome Phoenix-inspired designs for the Avengers, which we get a few more of this issue. I especially loved the Echo Namor fight at the beginning of the book. I love the boiling water around the characters as they use the Phoenix Force, as well as how at points they were fighting literally in the crushing depths of the Atlantic Ocean, but the water wasn't hindering them at all because they are like beyond it and they are more powerful than the crushing pressures of water so I liked that it was literally just burning away from them and keeping them safe. It was really cool to look at. The Avengers issue 42 was another really fun and action-packed installment into the Phoenix Force storyline, with Jason Aaron delivering more cool tournament matchups as well as a pretty big twist there at the end that I'm looking forward to being explored next issue. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10. The Avengers issue 42 finds Echo battling Namor at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean for the Phoenix Force. While they battle, Namor remembers how he was a young man when he murdered a shark, having thrown it onto the rocks above where it smothered itself. When his mother found out, she demanded to know why he did it, so Namor lied, saying the shark tried to bite him. His mother tells him that if they wanted to kill everything that tries to bite them, then they would be swimming alone in the ocean. But Namor disagrees, since after he killed a few, everything else will learn to keep clear of Prince Namor. Namor and Echo's battle continues, with both seemingly evenly matched until until Namor summons some sharks. The sharks rip into Echo as Namor knows that if he dies, the sea dies with him and he needs the power of the stars. Not to set the air breathers on fire, but to hold them at bay on the rocks above as they smother themselves like the shark. Namor uses his power to part the seas, causing Echo to fall into a void as the prince knows that he will be the one true phoenix. Captain America meanwhile is beaten by Shang-Chi, knocked to the ground. Steve is glad, wanting another beating, but Shang isn't so sure about about this since he wishes not to fight Steve. Captain America understands, but he knows the Phoenix isn't giving them much of a choice. Steve knows that they have been focusing on who shouldn't wield the force when they should be focusing on who should, and while he knows it's not a fair ask, Shang-Chi is one of the most gifted fighters he has ever seen and he is there to help him control the power and win the battle, but the man needs to punch him in the face with the Phoenix. Shang-Chi does so, smashing Cap away, but the hero doesn't give up, coming back at Shang-Chi for more. Shang -Chi focuses the Phoenix Force, unleashing its fire through his fists and onto Captain America, but he soon explodes from the power. Cap is suddenly taken back to the White Hot Room, realizing the Phoenix knew their plan and stopped it. Valkyrie says that it was a good plan, but the Force doesn't like them making plans. T'Challa had hoped that there was enough darkness in Shang-Chi's soul left over from his father that the Phoenix would have liked it, but Shang's refusal to follow in his father's footsteps proved his undoing. Jennifer tells them that Namor won his battle against Echo and she could hear Echo screaming in her head, wanting to know what the Atlantean did to her. Black Knight says that it will be whatever he's going to do to them next, so they need to be careful. Cap knows that they can't keep this game going, but T'Challa says that it's not a game and like it or not, their fight is there. He talks about how he battled Nighthawk to a standstill, but the Phoenix just simply chose him. And right now, they are all fighting the same fears of failing and even more so, what happens if they win? Black Knight does ask what happens 
happens if they win, since then it's the Avengers versus the Phoenix all over again, except only this time, one of them is wearing the flames. Wolverine says that he's not an Avenger anymore, and none of the others will be wearing the flames, since they have taken enough from mutants already, and they aren't taking the Phoenix as well. Valkyrie calms Logan down, knowing that that's what the Phoenix wants, them posturing and bickering with one another. Cap tells T'Challa that one of them is going to die there if they can't send the space bird back to where it belongs, but T'Challa wonders if Earth is where it actually belongs, and what if it came to them now for a specific reason, but either way, they must be ready, both inside the Phoenix and outside. At Avengers Mountain, Moon Girl locks the Celestial Teleporter onto Phoenix's radiation signature, hoping the Avengers Jail can hold it, told that it's a Celestial Cage Rib, so it should. Blade contacts the group, saying that Thor tells them not to use the teleporter and only use it as a last resort since their teammates are still inside the Phoenix Force. Blade and his team meanwhile keep Namor's team at bay, and Luke talks about the White Hot Room and how it was the whitest place he has ever seen, and he's been to the Hamptons. Iron Fist asked about the Starbrand baby and who's looking after them, shocking Luke who learns about the Avengers space baby for the first time as well as boy thing. Moon Girl meanwhile asks Brew how he spends all his time in his lab, learning the alien discovered the joys of a double espresso from Tony Stark. The heroes soon learn that the Phoenix's energy is spiking again as Iron Man, Ghost Rider and Captain Marvel battle with the Cosmic Bird. Tony thinks that this is a terrible plan since they have all been down this road before and it's not a fight the Avengers can win, not if they want to save their friends that is. Carol knows that for Thor this isn't just about friends and it's personal as Thor meanwhile continues to battle the Phoenix as well, knowing the flame well enough and knowing that it cannot be reasoned with since it does not care who it hurts to get what it wants, making it the ultimate narcissist. He knows he despises the Phoenix but he can't remember why as he blasts it yet again. As Stonehenge, Black Knight uses the Ebony Blade to call forth its great power from the cosmos, combining it with the Phoenix Force to become the Phoenix Knight. The Phoenix powered Red Widow launches her attack, saying Dane talks too much and she'll teach him the blade when she buries it in his stomach. Above the Bermuda Triangle, Shana and American Eagle battle each other for the Force as Valkyrie has her weapons broken by the angry Phoenix She-Hulk, who apologizes to Jane since Hulks don't lose. Wolverine meanwhile can see the desire for the Force within all of those who say they don't want it or don't want to admit they don't want it, all because he sees himself in them as well. He says he's used to being repulsed by his own thoughts of himself and he knows he's a real piece of work, but a piece of work who can still manage to do the right thing now and then. T'Challa Mimo is taken to Chernobyl for his next battle, where the vampires crawl around in the darkness around him. Suddenly there is a bright light as the phoenix powered Wolverine arrives, unleashing his power on the Black Panther. Thor Mimo thinks about the phoenix's history with him and his history with his father, thinking that that is what irks him, but soon he feels something else, his own connection to the force, something he has felt time and time again. He continues to battle the fire as he realizes the feeling he has is some form of love as the phoenix talks to him, not wishing to fight the god of thunder anymore, since it's time he knows the truth of his existence and a secret his father has hid for centuries. The phoenix takes her human form again, saying that she has come to tell her son everything.